Hello, in this video we have a beam that is made by connecting two two-inch by four-inch beams in a T-pattern as shown here below. Uh, we are asked to determine two things. Uh, first of all, we're asked to determine the location of the centroid of this kind of T-shape. And then, furthermore, we are asked to find the rectangular area moment of inertia, so IXX, uh, about this combined centroid. Um, all right, so the first thing I like to do in problems like this is to come up with uh, a table. And so I've got, with my T-shape, I've got two parts. I'm going to call this bottom portion 1 and this top portion 2. And both of these are rectangles. They're going to be fairly easy to deal with. All right, so I've got the shape. I've got 1, 2, and I'm going to make a row for the total, which we're going to use in some instances. All right, so the original, actually I'm going to start here at the base, and I need some way to kind of centrally measure it, so I'm going to call this x prime. And so the first thing I need to do is figure out how high up this centroid is. Um, and so if I do the centroid or x bar location, um, I do the y bar location. And it's pretty easy, this thing is symmetric, um, so this is going to be 0, 0, and if both of, the com both of the parts have the same number, this is also going to be 0. So the uh, centroid is going to be somewhere along this y-axis where x is equal to 0. That shouldn't be that surprising. Um, and then I'm going to look for the centroid of each of my parts as well. All right, so for part 1, the base piece here, it's 4 inches tall. And so the center of that is going to be two inches up. All right, and for the second one, uh, I've got this top piece. It's going to be, if it's two inches tall, it's going to be one inch up there. But I have to go all the way, I go four inches up, and then an additional one inch there. So it's going to be five inches up there. Uh, and then the total is what I'm going to solve for. And so to do that, I also need to know the area of each of the shapes. And so the area, 2 inches by 4 inches, 8 inches squared. Same thing, 2 inches by 4 inches, 8 inches squared. Um, so the total area is going to be 16 inches squared. All right, so to find this y bar value, I'm going to need to do some calculations. So y bar um, total. Is going to be equal to um, a one y bar one plus a two y bar two over the total area. All right, so plug in the numbers eight times two plus 8 times 5, divide that whole thing by 16, y bar total is going to be simply, uh, it's going to be 3.5 inches. All right, so I can plug that back into my table. And that is this distance right here. So the centroid is 3.5 inches up from the base. All right. So next, we need to find the moments of inertia. And so to do that, we're going to do we're going to create another column. This is going to be i x x about the centroid of each shape. Um, and so this is like C1. This would be C2. Uh, so this is the unadjusted version. All right, and so that, each one of those um, is going to be uh, I, here, let's do the calculations here. Uh, the moment of inertia uh, for a rectangle is 1 12th times B times H cubed. So I, X, X, C1 is 
1 twelfth bh cubed, um, and that's going to be 1 twelfth, um, and then my base is going to be 2 inches, my height is 4 inches. So times 2 times 4 cubed, uh, and that number uh, ends up being 10.667 inches to the fourth. If I do the same thing, IXXC2, I have the same equation, 1 12th B H cubed, um, but for part two, I switch the two dimensions. So I've got a height of two inches and a, uh, a B value of four inches. So 1 12th times four times two cubed. And that one is only 2.667 inches to the fourth. All right, so I can plug in those values in my table. This one's going to be 10.667 inches to the fourth, 2.667 inches to the fourth. But before I can add these values, I need to adjust them with the um, parallel axis theorem. And so for that, I'm going to have my R values, my distances between um, the x-axis in C1 and C, and then C2 and C. And so you'll notice both of these actually, if it's 3.5 inches up, this is 2 inches up, this is going to be 1.5 inches, and if this is 5 inches up and I go down to 3.5, this is also 1.5 inches. All right. So now I need to find my I x, x adjusted. All right, and so for each of those, I'm going to <coughs> adjust those values. So i, x, x, 1 adjusted is going to be my original value of 10.667 inches to the fourth plus a d squared, or ar squared in this case. Um, and so this was my 1.5 inches. This was my area, and the area of shape 1 was 8 inches squared. Um, and so ixx adjusted uh, gives me a value of, um, or ixx1 adjusted gives me a value of 28.667 inches to the fourth. I can do the same thing for part two. And so this one I start with 2.667 inches to the fourth. I'm adding on A times D squared. This D is the distance between the axes of 1.5 inches, or the R we had in our table. Um, and the area is also 8 inches squared. All right, so I plug in those values, uh, and for this one, I'm going to wind up with 20.667 inches to the fourth. And so let's plug those into our table. All right, so for our table, we had 28.667 inches to the fourth and 20.667 inches to the fourth, and now that they're adjusted, we can simply add them. And so if I add 28.667 plus 20.667, I wind up with 49.334 inches to the fourth. And that is the area moment of inertia of this T-shape about its combined centroid, which is 3.5 inches up from the base. Um, and that's what we wanted for our problem. So with that, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.